Hi, I'm Stephen Downs. I'm the program leader for the Learning and Performance Support Systems Program at the National Research Council in Canada. Today I want to talk about the overall concept and architecture for LPSS. We've been working on LPSS for a little while now. We've explored quite a bit about the way people learn using learning management systems and educational technology. Now I want to talk about how we approach learning here in building the LPSS technology, the LPSS.me website, and future work down the line. The concept of LPSS basically is this. First, learn from anywhere with anyone. The idea here is not to learn from one university or one course provider or one site or one system, but rather to be able to learn from any content that's located anywhere on the internet, whether it's edX, Udacity, a learning management system, Flickr, YouTube, Khan Academy, or your best friend. It doesn't really matter. And learn with anyone, not just the class that you've been stuck with, not just the people in your community, but people that you choose, that you connect with from around the world. Second, keep all of your learning records in one place. This is a big problem, not just for individual learners who lose track of what they're doing and don't have an easy way of presenting all the courses, workshops, training sessions, MOOCs, whatever that they've taken. It's also a big problem for employers who don't know what their employees have learned. And it's a hard job for people who are looking for new employees, new recruits, to know what they've done when there's no good way of putting all your records in one place. LPSS is about centralizing the learning records around the individual who did the learning, putting the ownership of those records in the hand of that person and enabling that person to share those records with whomever they want, whatever records they want. Third, express, create, and show what you can do. Learning isn't passive. Learning isn't sitting there watching a bunch of videos. Learning is about working with people, creating things, interacting with environments, with simulations, with games, with tasks, with challenges. It's about creating things, whether they be articles, videos, blog posts, electronic diagrams, case studies, and then showing what you can do, taking the things that you create, the problems that you solve, and sharing them with members of your own community or with members of the professional community that you want to be a part of. Learning is about sharing as much as it is about consuming content. And so LPSS is directed toward that. And finally, using your learning to make your life better. There's no point, well, I guess there is a point to learning if you're not making your life better, but generally people are trying to make their life better. They're trying to achieve employment. They're trying to win contracts or new business, or if they're a small and medium-sized enterprise, they might be trying to get project funding, whatever. The idea here is to be able to match what you've done with the opportunities that are available for you out there in the world. So that there's a direct link from what you want to do, what learning you actually do, the things that you've created, your learning record, all the way through to obtaining that position, that contract, that project funding of your choice. So that's the concept in a nutshell. It takes a lot of technology to make it work. If it was easy, it would already be done. Uh, if it was easy, uh, you'd have it now. So here's how we've approached it at LPSS. First of all, we have the model where the learner is at the center. And then around the learner are the various services. I've used the 1000 word model uh, with all due credit to XKCD uh, for, for that kind of expression. But really, if you look at it on the upper left-hand corner, your LPSS system 
needs to connect to the external world. Stuff comes into your system, like courses, like videos, like messages from your friends, like directives from the corporate office, whatever. Stuff goes out. Messages you send, videos you create, blog posts you write, case studies, whatever. Then there's stuff you keep, which I've called the closet. Uh, that's your online storage, right? Pictures, books, movies, you just pile them up high and, and they're there if you need them, but you don't carry them around with you all the time. Then there's the playroom. The playroom is your personal learning assistant. Your playroom is where you do stuff. Your playroom is where you actually go play with the simulation, play with a game, try to write a piece of software, maybe make something with Lego, whatever you can imagine. And LPSS helps you do that. LPSS provides what we call scaffolds to support you in that activity. And then finally in the lower right, what I've called robot wisdom here, because I was limited to 10 hundred words, right? Uh, this is the analytics of the system. That's the smarts of the system. That's the bit of the system that looks at what you've done and tells you that you might be interested in doing this. Or it looks at what you've read and tells you you might be interested in talking to so-and-so. It does a lot more than that, but that's the basic idea. If we look at it in more detail, we get the major elements of the LPSS system that we're building. On the upper left-hand side, resource repository network. So this is what we call the harvester or the aggregator. It's an engine. It contacts web pages, services, etc., around the internet or in your digital environment. Uh, it might uh, capture an RSS feed. It might read a list of courses from Coursera or edX. It might connect to your email. There's a whole range of things that the resource repository network can connect to. And the RRN brings that in and helps organize that for you. Then it goes into your personal learning record. And, and you notice the personal learning record here is represented as a graph. The idea here is that we have what we call the personal graph, which is the record of all the resources that you've looked at, all the activities that you've undertaken, the people that you've talked to, the events that you've attended. And it's not just a great big list, but they're put into context with each other. So you know what's related to what. So if you look at one thing, you can see the other things. The cloud storage I mentioned, we use existing cloud storage systems that everybody can use around the internet. Things like Dropbox, Amazon Web Services, Own Cloud, which is a way of storing your cloud storage in your living room, and so on. Learning Assistant is the thing that connects LPSS to other resources, to other systems. It might use LTI to launch a learning resource from edX. It might uh, access a SCORM compliant learning resource and show that. It might connect with a third party tool such as a simulation engine. We've connected OPSS with uh, the NeuroTouch simulator, for example. And it gives us information about these environments, the place, the system that we're working with, what we did with these things, captures this and helps build our own personal learning record. And then finally, the analytics I mentioned earlier, we do some pretty technical stuff because we have some pretty uh, well established and knowledgeable analytics uh, expert shares. We do things like entity recognition, for example, where we look at a page, a blog page, say, and are able to identify the entities it refers to in the text in order to help build that graph. Sentiment analysis, automatic translation, text analysis to look for patterns, look for concepts, competency detection to see what experts in the field actually are doing in their learning so we can use that to inform us about what novices should be doing in their learning. So we put all of this together and this is a key point. It all works together. It's not just a harvester. It's not just cloud source uh, storage. It's not just Pinterest or just a social network. 
It's all of these things together, taking these tools that were traditionally available only to the enterprise, traditionally available only to colleges, universities, uh, hosted websites, and it packages them and puts them into the hands of the learner, puts them into your hands to use as you want to use them. Here's the simplified design of the system. Again, it's the same sort of concept, but you see, there's a central part, which is LPSS proper, which is the stuff that we make. But really the key here is that it connects all of these external things, the external repositories, external cloud storage, external applications, API, simulation systems, whatever, and external analytics and services so that you don't have to have all of that processing power on your own computer in order to take advantage of the, the capacity that computing power gives you today. Here's another way of looking at it. This is the way we've set up the projects inside LPSS. So we had the RRN project, the PC project, each, etc. Each one of these doing some of the tasks and they're broken down into some very specific tasks like data information retrieval itself cleaning the information, representing the information, and, and building the repository of content, which will go into your personal cloud. Data synchronization, synchronization et cetera, for cloud. Uh, the search and recommendation layer, the data capture layer, all of these are elements of the technology. And if you want to see this in more detail, hey, this is a video. You can freeze the frame and read the text. We can go, and, and we do go, into even more detail in each of these major areas. Here's the resource repository network represented graphically, for example. Look at the different kinds of information that are out there on the internet right now that you use today. Email, uh, blogs and, 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 and Flickr pages, SharePoint repositories, Facebook, Twitter, Monster.com for job opportunities government repositories, learning management systems, etc. The RRN brings that content into your system and then analyzes it, looks for entities, and then stores it in the graph. The graph is made up of different types of things, articles, photos, videos, people, authors, publishers, job opportunities, competencies, etc. Even certificates, even if they're spelled wrong, they're still in there. It's a bunch of different entities that we store in the graph, we relate to each other so that if you're looking at one, you can see what's related to that thing that you're looking at. Your personal learning record has three major components and a bunch of minor ones. It's an activity record. If you're doing something on an external system, like uh, a, again, a simulation or a game or an external learning uh, tool, such as a quiz, you create an activity record. That activity record is stored in something called a learning record store. And PLR manages your access to learning record stores. It also manages your portfolio, the artifacts that you create, papers you write, photos you take, etc. The evidence of your work, and some of that evidence includes badges, certificates, credentials, and competencies. This is a, a rapidly changing environment, and there will be other kinds of records of your learning in the future. It takes all of these and represents them for you, and you can manage these and export these as your own personal CV or export these into job search services, etc., so that you can project your credentials into that third party site. Your personal learning assistant. The idea here is to collect the contextual information for the system. If you're working on a simulator, like this Neural Touch simulator, it captures that information and stores it as part of your learning activity. It also displays the resources, as I mentioned, the, uh, the SCORM or Learning Technologies Integration. Uh, it provides authoring environments or, or, or templates, etc., to help you create and manipulate data. 
and it even helps project LPSS capacity into external services. An example of that is the, the toolkit that you can add to your web browser so that LPSS travels with you wherever you go on the internet. So finally, we have cloud services, which is the places you store your data and LPSS has mechanisms to create and, and maintain your accounts on these services, access what you've put into those services and put new contents into those services and then learning analytics. And I want to talk a little bit about learning analytics because again, it points to the value of taking a personal learning approach. Traditional learning analytics are focused around one platform, say edX, and across many people. And the result is you get data about many people using one platform. It's very shallow. And it doesn't really tell us about the person. I mean, a lot of these systems use this kind of data to make predictions. It does that by clustering people together, getting demographic information and making predictions. But it's shallow. And really, in the end, it tells us more about the platform than it does about the person. We're interested in deep learning analytics. Deep learning analytics focuses on one person. And it tells us about that person and it gathers data from that person's usage of a number of different systems, Facebook, Twitter, Redx, Coursera, YouTube, Blackboard, email, etc. Now, obviously we can also create a hybrid type of analytics, merging both shallow and deep, but that's a bit tricky and you don't get there without the deep analytics. So it's only if you have a personal learning environment that you can do deep analytics. And so that's the kind of analytics that we're trying to do in support of LPSS. The take home, again, with the technology that we're designing, a lot of the stuff that I've put into the slides here is built, some of it, okay, a fair amount of it is still projected to be built it's in the work plan, it's what we're working toward. The take home again, the objectives of the system are to enable you to learn anything from anywhere with anyone. To keep all of your learning records in one place where you own those learning records and you can share those learning records in the format and to the recipients that you choose where you can express and create and show what you can do and, and store the things that you create in your personal cloud and share what you create with your friends, with prospective employers, with the world at large. And you can use this to make your life better using analytics, deep personal analytics to match you up with job openings that you uniquely are qualified for or for funding opportunities or contracts or programs, etc. Totally up to you. And that's the end goal of LPSS is to not simply act as a teaching system, but rather to act as a learning system that helps you use learning to accomplish the things that you want to do in your life. I'm Stephen Downs. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you again.